Hey YouTube, how's it going? Dustin Smith here with A2K, Allegiance to the King, and today we're going to talk about Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 with the warning that people should stop abusing Romans 10 and verse 9. Yes, you heard it. I am encouraging people to stop abusing Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. There are a lot of people that read and teach and describe Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, which says... If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. People take that passage and they assume that that is all that Paul ever said on the subject. And they read it and teach it as if Romans chapter 10 only had verse 9 in it and the rest of the chapter was just kind of marked out with a black marker, okay? Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 only makes sense within its context which is within chapter 10 of Romans, and within the book of Romans, and within the wider New Testament theology, okay? So you can't just isolate it and only teach it without reading what comes after it. And that's what many people are guilty of doing. I'm sorry to say that. Many people are guilty of just reading Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, and they stop right there as if Paul has nothing else to say on the topic, when in fact Paul absolutely does. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to read the following verses to help place Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 in its context. Okay, so Romans 10 and verse 9 does say that if you confess with your mouth the lordship of Jesus, okay, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, there is a promise of salvation to that confession to the lordship of jesus and believing that the new age is broken in with jesus resurrection and that salvation will come in the future to that person okay now what else does paul say what else does he say on this particular subject verse 10 for with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness that's covenant status and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation that ultimate rescue from judgment and god's wrath verse 11 for the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Okay, they will not be put to shame. Verse 12, for there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. They have the same Lord. Same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, so this same promise of salvation is for Jews and Gentiles alike. Okay, we get that. That's clear. There's not a lot of controversy on that. Okay. Then we get down to verse 14, and in verse 14, we have the beginning of Paul asking the question, how? How can these things be true? How can these things come into place? And he uses this word how four times, asking four very deliberate questions. How can it be that we ultimately get to that point to where we can confess the lordship of Jesus, understanding who Jesus is, understanding what that lordship means, understanding what it means that Jesus was raised from the dead prior to the ultimate resurrection of those entering into the kingdom of God and that salvation of that future kingdom. How do we get to that point where we understand all those things to where we can make a genuine and authentic confession to that lordship and placing our trust into the God that raised Jesus from the dead? He starts here in verse 14. Question number one, how will they call on him in whom they have not believed. Okay, so that's a question. How can you call upon Jesus if you have not believed in him? Okay, so notice you can't call upon Jesus if you have not already believed in him, if you've not already placed your trust, loyalty, and your obedience into the human being Jesus. Okay, you can't do that. Okay, so notice you can't just call upon him. You have to already have placed your belief, your trust, your loyalty, and your obedience into him. You have to have already believed in him. So that's that step that he gives there. And then the next question he asks, how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? That's very specific. Okay, I'm going to read that again. How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? How can you believe in Jesus if you have not heard him? How will you believe in him whom... You have not heard. How can we believe in Jesus if we have not heard Jesus speak? Meaning, how can we believe in him if we have not heard Jesus speak the gospel? Okay? Notice here this is drawing back to Jesus and not just believing in him, but believing in what Jesus preached as the gospel of salvation. You cannot believe in Jesus if you have not heard him preach. I'm going to read that one more time. How will they believe in him? How will they believe in Jesus whom they have not heard, whom they have not heard. 
you have to have heard Jesus speak. You have to have heard Jesus speak the gospel, okay? And then he says, question number three, and how will they hear without a preacher? Okay, how are we going to hear this gospel that Jesus preached without some sort of preacher coming and telling us about this gospel message? Someone who is preaching to us the message of the kingdom that Jesus himself taught, okay? Then verse 15 brings on the fourth question, and how will they preach unless they are sent? Okay, so how is this preacher going to come that is going to preach Jesus' message so that we can hear Jesus, so that we can believe in him, so that we can call on his name, so that we can confess the lordship of Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, okay? You see there that Romans chapter 10 verse 9 is not the only thing that Paul says. That is the end result of all of these other points that he unpacks over and over and over again. He continues to unpack these things. So now we're on the fact of a preacher and someone has to send the preacher. Verse 15, he continues, just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel. Here he's citing Isaiah chapter 52, a passage about bringing the good news of God's reign, of God, God and his kingdom. Verse 16, he says, however, they did not all heed the good news. Not everyone has listened to the gospel that the preacher has sent so that we can believe Jesus as we hear Jesus, hearing Jesus' gospel, so that we can call upon his name, so that we can confess his lordship and believe that God raised him from the dead. For Isaiah says, who has believed our report? That's from Isaiah chapter 53. And then he gets down to verse 17. Folks, this is the most important thing I'm going to say right here, okay? Verse 17 is the conclusion of this argument, of this train of thought where he continues to unpack about the confessing of the Lordship, of the believing, of the calling upon him, of the hearing him, of hearing the preacher, of the preacher being sent. How does this ultimately start? What is the foundation to this argument? He starts off in verse 17 with the word so, okay? The word so in English might sound very casual, but in Greek, it means in conclusion, okay? So after everything we've said, let's put it all into an equation and let's press the equals button. After everything that we've said, what is the ultimate conclusion to this? So in conclusion, all right? Faith, the belief, the trust, the faithfulness that we have, this comes by hearing, okay? Now this word for hearing in Greek is the word akoi, Okay, and it doesn't mean the act of hearing, it means the thing that you actually hear. Okay, it's actually a noun, it's not the verb of hearing. Okay, so faith comes from the thing that we hear. You could actually probably translate the word report, okay, or the message. And this hearing comes from, notice this, the word of Christ, the word of Christ. Okay, what is the word of Christ? That is Christ's own message jesus own message what is jesus own message jesus own message is his gospel and jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of god there you have it okay this faith comes from what we hear and what we hear comes from the gospel that jesus preached so the gospel that jesus preached is the foundation of the argument of belief and confessing the lordship of Jesus and believing that God raised him from the dead in Romans chapter 10, it all starts with Jesus preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Once Jesus preaches the gospel of the kingdom, then a preacher can come who has heard it and can preach that to others. Then we can believe in him whom we have heard because we can believe in Jesus whom we have heard preach the gospel of the kingdom. Then we can call upon his name. Then we can confess his lordship and then we can believe that God raised him from the dead. Folks, I hope that you have seen that you cannot just read Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 and just isolate it from its context and take this black marker and just scratch out the rest of your Bible, especially verses 14 and 15 and the conclusion, the important conclusion in verse 17. You can't do that, okay? In order for you to fulfill the requirements in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, which is confessing that lordship of Jesus and believing that God raised him from the dead so that you will have salvation in the age to come, you must first believe in Jesus' gospel about the kingdom of God, okay? 
Folks, I hope this has encouraged you in your understanding and your reading responsibly of the book of Romans. Okay? Don't isolate passages out of their context. That's abusing the Bible. That's not being honest. Okay? Let's be honest. Let's read things in their context and let's take seriously Jesus' message about the kingdom of God. Once we have believed that, then we can confess Jesus as our Lord, which means we are submitting to doing what he says and following in his lifestyle. And we're believing that the promise of salvation and the resurrection of the dead has broken into the present with Jesus being raised from the dead. And there we have the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ all bound up in the gospel that leads to a life of faithfulness unto the Lordship of Jesus. Okay? Be sure to like, subscribe, and share for more videos on our topics. My name is Dustin Smith. I'm with A2K, Allegiance to the King. Until next time, take care. Thank you.